tutorial, I will show you how to set up a molecular dynamics simulation using uh, Chimera as interface. Now this will be a short example so you get the idea how to run molecular dynamics and what it takes to set up the simulation. Um, what will happen is we will take this example, we are going to build the RGD peptide and we are going to go through all these preparatory steps in order to run the simulations. Now this will be done um, first of all we have to have a structure so we have to build the peptide we are going to um, prepare it then we are going to put the peptide in a simulation box we're going to solve it that in water we are going to uh, put some constraints if needed and then we are going to set up the, the exact um, simulation parameters and we are going to run the simulation and then I'll show you how to analyze the trajectory and what to look for. Okay, let's begin. Let's build the peptide first. So let's go to Tools, Structure Editing, Build Structure. Select that, make a peptide, RGD, let's name it, RGD, peptide, click Apply dialog appears let's build a peptide that is stretched let's choose the anti-parallel beta strand for the above uh, phi psi angles let's select all the residues click set everything is set click ok and the peptide is made excellent so right now we have our first structure can see in the model panel it's shown right here and we are ready to begin our simulation to start that we are going to open the simulation panel go to molecular dynamics molecular dynamics simulation the dialogs open first we are, we have to prep our structure so we click on Start Docking Prep Tool. This will add hydrogens and charges to our um, atoms. Click OK. OK. Protons are added. Um, we are going to assign charges right now. So let's click on that. Select our force field. OK. Doc prep finished. Now we are ready to for step two, which will be the solvation. Now we are going to use um, periodic boundary conditions. We are going to create a box size. Let's do automatic box size here. Click on Start Solvate tool. Another dialog opens. Now we are going to select a solvent. The Camera lets you to choose several different solvents. You can use methanol or chloroform, but for this reason here we are going to use the water um, box. And the box will be box size of let's say one. If you are not sure what all these um, numbers mean, always you can reach to help. Just click on here and you will be taken into a particular um, doc file, help file, when you can um, read on uh, particular commands or functions. Click OK. And the box was saved. Now you see the triangles, these are the um, water molecules, which are in uh, special format. So if you go into residue, you see water will be here. Okay, once we have that, we can add additional ions if needed. We can neutralize or give specific, uh, add specific atoms to the system. Uh, if you click ion types, uh, chlorine, let's click apply. No chlorine is shown. Um, let's click, for example, 
see the selection here it's quite quite good so what else we have here looks like our system is already neutralized so we don't have to add anything so click OK and we are ready to put some constraints if needed but for this purpose right now we are not going to constrain any atoms you can put that here mm, we are going to leave the electrostatic interaction and Leonard Jones interaction methods um, by default in the running parameters we say that we want to do a thousand of steps for the minimization here for this method and thousand steps for this method you can click on run it will run the actual minimization so system will be minimized you see the output here now because of the periodic uh, boundary conditions you will see that this weird lines so it means that molecule travel from from this position to that position and it looks like um, it's stretching too much Okay, once our minimization finishes, we can move on to another step, which will be the equilibration. And let me remind you what is happening right now. So we have minimization, we have equilibration, we have production, which is the actual simulation time, and we have to select some other options later on. Okay, so in the equilibration, I will say that I want to do uh, 3000 steps for now. Uh, you can leave all the parameters by default and you have to specify the output uh, trajectory file here and the output, output restart trajectory file okay so you select that browse select the folder and you're good to go okay so my actual production run will consist of 5000 steps I will leave that and I also have to specify the directory. So let me do that. Okay, so let's do production. And let's do, I'll just copy that. Okay, once we are ready with this, we can select other runtime options we can use um, multiple CPUs and yes I will use that and you can select live trajectory so it will be showing you all the steps but this slows down the actual uh, computation so I will keep this um, disabled once you're ready we are going to click run and wait for the simulation to finish okay so, let, so let's do that see right now it's going it's minimizing again this is because when you are here into the minimization I have clicked that run there was no need for that you can just go through all the preparatory steps and click that simulation done. And as shown here, the simulation will be updated every 10 steps. So let's, for, let's wait for it until it finishes. Okay, it looks like our simulation has finished. That was pretty fast. And you just saw some warning. You can neglect like this. And another dialog pop up. And this is the uh, MD Movie Dynamics Trajectory uh, player where you can actually play all the frames 
so we have 800 frames generated and we can play here to see how simulation works. So this looks pretty nice. So you can see the behavior of atoms in the system. Okay, in the next step we will talk about how to analyze the trajectory, what it all means. Once animation is finished, it will be encoded into the movie and you can embed that in the presentation if you like. Okay, now let's talk about trajectory analysis. You can do trajectory analysis from the menu here, from the MD movie, and you can do different things. If you go click analysis, you can do all these analysis. You can plot interactions, uh, you can create um, MSD map, you can plot distances, angle, dihedrals, kinetic energy, potential energy, and all of these parameters. Let's talk about potential energy first. Let's click on that. And it will create this potential energy plot. And you can see how the system behaved during the simulation. So these are the frames of the simulation that can relate to the time. And when you click on particular time point, you will see the actual energy of the system here. And you will see your value shown here. So you can analyze what was happening in the system. Okay, you can save this as a plot, just save it here as a PNG or uh, other file format, and you can um, save that for your presentation purposes as well. Another thing you, what you can do here, let's do the analysis of uh, clusters. So you can see during the simulation how your structure was looked like and it will be clustered for different representative um, points. So it's going into clustering. It will calculate all the RMSDs and the lowest RMD, RMSDs in each particular clusters will be grouped together to give you representative um, structure. So we can see here we have different clusters that are found based on the RMSD analysis. For example, you have 19 residues, which are very similar. And the representative frame is number 713. We have uh, 16 members that are very similar. And we have representative frame like that. And what you can do with this information, you can generate average structure for the cluster. Now, if you have thousands of different uh, um, uh, conformations, you can group them and you can find out how, what is the prevalent conformation for your system during the simulation time. So this tool can enable you to do that. Okay. What you can also do, you can analyze, let's say if you're interested in the change of 
angles or dihedrals, um, you can also do that and see how this was changing during simulation. So let's do the dihedrals. And I have one example here, which I will just delete for now. Okay, so for to do that, we have to specify uh, the dihedral angle. I have selected this angle, so I need to specify four atoms. So let me go ahead and deselect that and select that again. So you can see. All right, so I will select four atoms. One, two, three, and four. So this dihedral angle right here, I would like to see what was happening to that angle during simulation time. Once I have it selected, I will click on plot dihedral angles from the four selected atoms. It will take some time for it to generate. Okay, and here is the plot. So this is my this is my plot right here. Let me just resize that if I can. Oh, went away. There you go, it's a little bit smaller. And here on this axis you see your frame and your particular angle that is shown here. And you can move that and scroll it to a particular time point and your dihedral value is shown. So you can analyze change in the angle during simulation time. And you can compare that to the energy, for example. So there is a lot of different things you can do here when it comes to trajectory analysis. Okay. Another very interesting feature is that you can select particular set of atoms and you can keep them steady while everything else moves around. To do that, you have to select the atoms, your choice, click on actions, hold selection steady, and upon playing the frames, you see the whole system moves and your set of atoms stays the same. Let's make it slower. So if you are looking for this type of analysis, it's ready for you. If you no longer need that, go and stop holding steady atoms. You can also analyze your trajectory for, let's say, average structure. So you go to Analysis, you click Average Structure, and an average structure will be calculated. So you provide your starting frame, your end frame, and we will name it as an average structure. Take some time to compute that. And once it's finished, we have our average structure. You can select that. And this is my average structure that was the result of the simulation. Okay. Once we are happy with your results, I suggest that you always save your session file. Just in case if you want to come back and do something else on it. Now we can always